Marlow from Wild Food UK out foraging again on a beautifully sunny 14th of May. We're only just around the corner from my house and uh, what I'm out picking at the moment is some salad just to go with our lunch and you can do that in a in a two minute walk around here you can pick a tasty salad and this is one of the things that I use in our tasty salads at this time of year. Um, it's a, a tree actually not a bush it looks a, a bit like part of the hedgerow but what these are is the um, the sucker growth the base growth of this lovely big tree that you can see here which is in the tilia family or the lime family uh, and in Britain we've got three members of the lime family that grow in the wild there might be more but there's three that I know of that are the most common we've got the tilia cordata which is the small leaf lime and we've got Tilia platyphyllus, which is the large leaf lime, and then Tilia vulgaris, which I believe to be a sort of combination of the both, a hybrid. Um, and I think that's what we've got here because some of the leaves on this one are actually quite big, but we've still got all this sucker growth around the base of the tree. This is what the tree does. It shoots out from around, as you can see, its root and the top maybe or sort of the bottom rather uh, 10 feet of the tree can chuck out these suckers and it looks from a distance when you see these trees in parks and woodland it looks like there's a, a hedge around the base of the tree if they're left to grow most parks will cut them back each year and let you see a whole load of new sucker growth but in the wild like I say you wouldn't be able to get within maybe five feet of this tree from the sucker growth that's around the base. Now, from an edibility point of view, all three trees are the same. Uh, from a medicinal point of view, I believe there's small differences between the, between the three. Um, but one of the main things people use this tree for is uh, linden tea or lime tree tea, or I believe it gets called TL in uh, the fancy shops. They give things French names and charge a little bit extra for them. Um, but all three trees uh, produce flowers that create that lovely tr uh, tea which I drink because it's really tasty but uh, people that are into their herbal medicine will tell you that it relieves anxiety, it's good for your stomach and uh, a number of other different things. For me it just tastes good but at this time of year there's no flowers on the tree. I still use it for my salads though because it's one of the few trees where these leaves particularly the young shiny green ones like this are edible. Now from a flavour point of view they're, they're very neutral, they're perfect salad filler, they're not the, the great flavours that I put into my salads with our bitter cresses and sorrels and other things that have got punchy flavours from the wild. This is uh, our lettuce substitute but for me it's better than lettuce, it's nicer than lettuce and these younger leaves the ones that are shiny green if I can just if you want to come in close we can see the difference here this leaf and this leaf have started to go quite matte but this leaf is shiny and so are these young leaves now all of these young leaves are absolutely perfect as salad filler they go in all my salads at this time of year there's a few other things that we kind of consider salad filler things like chickweeds um, but this once the leaves start coming out in late spring and through summer as well I'm regularly at the base of one of these trees picking leaves from the sucker growth for our salads. Now sometimes you get a little bit of a bonus on these leaves, sometimes you'll get speckles of shiny stuff all over the leaves, particularly or only when there's aphids around. Now um, brush the aphids off, you don't want to eat those, but if you see those shiny speckles on the leaf then I highly recommend you try them because what those speckles are is something called honeydew which is aphid poo in a way. It's uh, it's something that the aphids excrete but what the aphids do is they take in sap from the tree and they basically excrete pure sugar so if you look in your garden if you've got aphids in your vegetable patch um, you'll see the ants farm them they go up behind the aphids and they they basically milk them for for the honeydew which frosts the leaves in the leaves in sugar makes them a really really tasty addition to your salad if you can 
get over the fact that you're eating aphid poo. I've done it plenty of times. It tastes great and I recommend you try it. But in the meantime, just go out and find a lime tree. Easy to spot from a distance because of this sucker growth around the base. These lovely heart-shaped leaves of different sizes depending on which variety you get. But they're very common. This is a tree we see all over Britain. It's um, not going to grow you any limes. This is not the lime tree that produces the fruit or kaffir lime leaves. They're completely different things. This is a tree that we get lovely salad leaves from and a lovely healthy tea a little bit later in the year. So go out and find one for yourself. If you want to find out more, go to www.wildfooduk.com.